The Way Out by Joseph S. Benner We know that with many, finances are often a problem. All followers of Jesus Christ should learn the law which, if obeyed, will enable them to rise out of all conditions of lack, limitation, inharmony, disease and unhappiness that may manifest. You ask if this is really possible and if there is a law which, if obeyed, will enable one to accomplish all that. We say emphatically there is such a law and that you can be free from the fear and dominance of money, that you can have an abundance of all good things, that you can be well and happy and can bring about an adjustment into perfect harmony of all departments of your life. If you want these things enough to train yourself to obey this law. You say that you would do anything to obtain such wonderful blessings, if it is humanly possible. It is not only possible, but everyone who is filled with such a desire can do it. For know a great truth, that you are permitted to be in such unhappy conditions by your higher self, solely in order that you may seek and gain the knowledge, the power and the ability to control them, in order to free yourself forever from them and to assume your true place in life and therein receive the heritage of good that is here for you whenever you become wise and strong enough to claim it and to use it for the good of others and not for selfish ends. First know that it is all a matter of consciousness and that you, yourself alone, are to blame for these conditions. For you alone created them and are firmly holding them in your consciousness, or they would not be so plainly manifesting. All this we are taught in those great words. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We know that you have heard this stated perhaps many times before, and so often that it may have become an old story. Some of you have tried to prove it and to rid your consciousness of all your negative thoughts. But because it took determined and persistent effort, you soon grew tired on account of the strong opposition met with, and you then dropped back into the current of the old conditions, and if anything became more helpless than you were before. Others may have heard of the saying, but it did not impress them, for they could not accept the assertion that all of the inharmonies in their lives are the result of their own beliefs, or of their past thinking crystallised into beliefs. They preferred to blame it all on someone else, and even God came in for a share of the blame. The main trouble with almost everyone is that they do not realise how many negative and destructive beliefs they are carrying around with them in the subconscious realms of mind and which creep through into the conscious mind whenever it is free from interest in other things. Until you can begin to study your mind and watch for and note these negative beliefs when they come, and you will find that they are actually beliefs, and refuse them further support, there is not much hope for you. In fact, it is the first thing you must learn to do. Those who are too mentally lazy to do such watching and controlling of their thoughts, 
are usually the ones who will not accept that their own thinking and beliefs create for them all of the conditions now manifesting in their lives. But it makes no difference whether you accept it as being true or not. It is the law. Now, if you are ready to hear the law, we will state it in words that everyone can understand. Note these words and let them impress themselves on you so that from this moment ever afterward, they will live in your mind as a guiding influence. Whatever you think and hold in consciousness as being so, out manifests itself in your body or affairs. Whether you accept this as yet or not, consider for a while the truth that every thought you think especially those relating in any way to self, hovers around in your mental atmosphere, just as a child stays close to its parent. These thoughts, being about yourself, receive the life that maintains them from the feeling that you put into them. In other words, the thoughts themselves are but mental forms, but when you think of them with feeling of any kind, you fill these forms with life, and they become as living things which ever return to you their parent to be fed with more living power. For all feeling expressed is life, is vital power, and if you only knew it, all the thoughts which persistently influence your mind and harass you are only your mental children clamouring for food and attention and compelling more worrying, anxiety or fear from you, all of which are excellent food containing rich vital power and which makes them grow rapidly until they become so powerful that in time they dominate your mind so that you can scarcely think of anything else. When the fact is, these thoughts exist to you only when you let them into your mind. That is, they are of importance to you only when you give them attention and recognition. But on the other hand, their power over you and their life can quickly be nullified by simply knowing the law and refusing to feed them longer with a life power by giving them further attention or interest. And it should not be necessary to state that voicing such thoughts definitely and speedily outmanifests them, for the spoken word is far more potent than the thought. Above all else, you should guard carefully your speech, voicing nothing you do not want to see manifest. Always remember, however, that by preventing such thoughts entering the mind, there will be no impulse to voice them. So that you can see now that it is all a matter of consciousness, of thinking and harbouring the right kind of thoughts, those you wish to out-manifest, and of letting into your mind no thoughts you do not want to manifest in your body or affairs. And perhaps you can also see that what is ordinarily called thinking is only the admitting into your mind of thoughts that originated chiefly in other minds, and which you, of course, attracted to you. This is also true of all negative, inharmonious and destructive thoughts. There must be something in you that attracts them or they would not come. Many will still permit them to come, for only by the suffering, hardship and struggle to escape from their influence that you undergo 
will you learn how to free yourself and gain the power to control and consciously direct your life to constructive ends. That is the hard way. But we are now going to show you the true way to free yourself forever from fear and worry about finances and from all other destructive forces. We are assuming that all who read are students and followers of Christ's teachings. You remember those significant words of his in the Sermon on the Mount. Take no thought, or be not anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom, consciousness, of God, and his righteousness, right ideas, and all these things will be added unto you. We know that these words seem important to you, but we also know that very few take them as actual promises and try definitely and determinedly to put them to the proof. But that is the very thing you must do if you would obey the law. And when we show you how to free yourself from fear and worry, you will not only be able to free yourself from the power money has over you, but you will have found the straight and narrow way to the kingdom and all the powers of the kingdom will help you if you are strong and determined enough to win the goal. For the kingdom of God and his righteousness is only a state of consciousness where we do right thinking, where we think God's thoughts only. Can you do that? Surely you can, if you will then this is the way. You must train yourself to stand guard continually at the door of your mind and to let in no thoughts or feelings that you do not want to out-manifest. Think this over carefully and you will see that it is the only way. It may seem hard at first, and you may not know what to admit and what to deny, but guard the door from every negative thought and feeling of whatsoever nature, from every thought that you know God would not have you think, from every doubt, fear, worry, anxiety or concern of any kind, from every tendency to criticize, judge or condemn anybody or anything or any condition, from self-pity, jealousy, envy, irritation, unkindness, anger, hatred, etc. These will give you an idea of what are negative and ungodlike thoughts and which must no longer have a part in your consciousness. If you will keep all such untrue thoughts out of your mind, you can see that then, and then only, can your higher self draw into your mind the true and positive thoughts that will attract to you the good that is waiting to manifest itself to you. For while your mind is cluttered with all those fearful, worrying, discouraged, sick, weak, poverty-tainted thoughts, how can you expect anyone who feels these vibrations, and vibrations are things you cannot cover up, to be attracted to you? Or how can you expect God to inspire you with thoughts of a beneficial nature? In fact, 
such negative thoughts actually keep away the things you are longing to have manifest in your life. For like attracts like. Think. Poverty-stricken thoughts do not attract prosperity or jobs. Sick thoughts do not build a healthy consciousness. And belief that you are a failure invites failure. You say this all sounds good, but when one is sunk so deep in conditions that no matter which way he turns, he sees only sickness, hunger, poverty or failure facing him, despite months of effort to conquer the condition, to get work or to do something to tide over till better days come. How is he to think of anything else? Yes, dear friend, we see what you are up against, but we also see that you are caught fast between the horns of a dilemma. You have sought help from the world of men, and it has turned you down. You have exhausted all the forces of self, and you admit that you are completely helpless. And perhaps you have even prayed to God, and seemingly he has not heard, or he has not answered you. But where, who, is this God to whom you have prayed? Is he somewhere up in the skies, or in some hazy place, you know not where? Have you prayed to the God within you? Have you turned there? and opened your heart to him, deep within yourself, in the kingdom where your higher self abides? If not, dear friend, then after reading this article carefully, until you truly get its full meaning for you, pray to him there. Get down on your knees and in deep and true humility, Pour out your heart to him, knowing that he, as your higher self, hears you. That he does know that you have need of all these things, and that he will answer you. Go back to those words in the Sermon on the Mount, and read them over again and again, until you get all of their wondrous meaning and realize that they are meant for you, and that they are a definite promise made by the Master to you, that if you will do what you are there told to do, the Father will give to you all things that you need. Think, this is Jesus' promise to you, and therefore it will be fulfilled if you do your part. You can do it. You must do it. If you would have the blessings which he promises you, and which we promise you when we say that you can have an abundance of all good things, and that you can be free from the dominance of money forever. And what must you do? You must not be anxious or worry anymore about what you shall eat or drink or what you shall wear, for your loving Father knows that you must have all of these things. But if you will seek first his kingdom, that is, his consciousness where you must think only his thoughts for you, as we have shown you how to do, and then will do what he tells you to do when his thoughts come into your mind. He will provide you with all the good things he has had in store for you from the beginning. We know that we are telling you to do what now seems almost impossible. But, dear friend, this is the only way to win these blessings and you say you will do anything to obtain them, if it is humanly possible. 
it is not only possible, but it is the very thing ordained and intended for you by your higher self, or he would not have brought this message to you and placed this ultimatum so squarely before you. You have tried your way, and you have tried the world's way, and you know where they have brought you, and now you are given the opportunity of trying God's way, the way laid out for you in the beginning. Can you not see that this is now the only way for you? Thus God brings his children that love him finally to realize that they cannot serve both God and mammon. For they must be shown that they are serving mammon just as much by fearing him and yielding to the power of money as they would be by openly worshipping money and becoming its slave when having great quantities of it. They must be made to see that by fearing money's seeming power, they are making it first and God second in their lives. And until they truly want to serve God more than any other thing, and prove it by their right thinking, speech and actions, they are not yet where his help can reach them. So this is the ultimatum that you are facing. You have now come to the place where God holds out his hand to you and says, My child, I would help you, but it means that you must give yourself and all your ideas over wholly to me, must learn to think only my thoughts, speak only what I would say, and do only what I would have you to do. It means that you must not let into your mind or believe any other thoughts, no matter what appearances are, or how much such thoughts beg for admittance. You have had your chance, and you see what a sorry mess you have made of things. Now, if you are willing utterly and completely to trust me, and to wait upon and serve me only, and will keep your mind and heart clean and empty of all untrue thoughts, so that I may fill them with my thoughts, I will inspire in you the ideas that will lift you quickly out of your present consciousness, which means out of present conditions, into one where peace, harmony and plenty will be your mental children that will ever come to you to be fed with loving trust in me, confidence in your power to express me, and with the pure joy of living that you will then be feeling as the natural and continuous state of your consciousness. Is this worth trying for? Do you really want it? Then what are you going to do about it? If you are willing to make a supreme effort and to put all the power of your will into it, will make yourself a positive agent of your father's will, looking only and always to him to guide and inspire you, you will truly receive all the help you need and will find, if you persist despite any discouragements that may come testing your determination, that you will then walk straight into the good that has long been waiting for you. This means that from this moment you must pay no more attention to appearances, for what is now appearing is but the out-manifestation of what you formerly visualized in your thinking, and which your fearing and worrying crystallized into facts and fastened upon you. Try to realize the great significance of this. It is not what you see as conditions surrounding you 
that really counts. It is what you believe is so. And when you know, as we have proven to you, that what you believe is the cause of what is manifesting outwardly as it now appears, you will definitely begin to change your beliefs into those you want to manifest. Think this over, for it is the only way you can change conditions and their appearances. You must remove from your consciousness the beliefs you are holding there by replacing them with beliefs you want to see manifest in your life and affairs. How can you do this? When you cannot help but believe the things that stare you in the face, no matter which way you turn. We will now show you the way, a way so simple and easy that anyone can do it, if they will obey exactly what we tell them to do. All that is needed is to say over and over again to yourself until you believe it absolutely, letting not a single doubt of its truth ever enter your mind, the following words. God loves and cares for me and is giving me all good things. I love him and think his thoughts and do only the things he wants me to do. Try to realize the full truth of these words, to feel it, to see yourself actually living in the consciousness of it, going about your daily work in that consciousness. If you do this, it will bring the greatest possible blessings into your life. The first statement should not be hard to believe, for you surely know that he loves and cares for you. For whether you know it yet or not, everything that has come into your life has been good for you. For through these things he has brought you to the place where you should be willing to look to and trust him only, so that his love and care can give you all the good things he has had for you from the beginning. And it should be easy to love him, and through consciously loving and trying to think his thoughts, you can see that it opens your mind so that his thoughts come into it, and can thus direct you just what to do that will bring success, prosperity, health, harmony and happiness into your life. Dear friends, we wish that we could reveal the truth of the above wonderful statements so clearly to you that they will live with you and will motivate your every thought, word and act forever afterward. They are so mighty in their truth that if lived, they will make you more than man. So do not pass them by because they seem so simple and commonplace. Stay with them until all their glorious import dawns upon you and you feel the change that they will surely and quickly bring into your consciousness and therefore into your life and all your affairs. And now for instructions of a concrete nature. Let us take some definite good that you want to have manifest in your life. We do not mean things but conditions that will bring harmony and happiness to yourself and dear ones. Which means that you must make sure that it is good, that it is what the God of you wants you to have. That should be easy, for he has ordained all good things for you, but you must know that and be able to see it as good. Then build in your mind a picture of that good. Build it perfect in every detail so that it stands out clear and distinct as a finished and accomplished fact. 
according to how complete and distinct is this picture in your mind, is it actually finished on the mental plane, the plane of concrete mental forms, which determines its physical appearance, and is it ready to come forth into manifestation? And now, if you will follow exactly the same process which brought into manifestation all of the present unwanted conditions in your life, only using the opposite kind of thoughts and feelings, as we shall indicate, you can bring forth into perfect manifestation this picture now existing on the mental plane and awaiting the action of your will. We will take as an illustration a friend who recently lost her position. Several weeks before, this friend mentioned to the writer that their business was very poor and that they had laid off several who had charge of departments similar to hers and she supposed she would be the next to go. The writer remonstrated with her and tried to show that that attitude of mind would bring to her what she did not want. Two weeks later, another friend reported that she had said the same thing to her, and we do not know to how many others she had voiced it. But a few days afterward, as she had pictured it, the notice of her dismissal came. Now let us analyse the mental process which created and brought to pass the losing of her position. The conditions of the business, the letting go of other department heads and clerks, naturally caused our friend to build a picture in her mind of her also probably having to go sooner or later. And through the fear of it, she actually saw herself leaving. Day after day, the conditions in the office, her talks with fellow employees and with others in other businesses in similar bad straits, and with those who had lost their jobs, increased and intensified her fear and helped her to build in the details of her picture until she had it all finished and perfect. Then she naturally felt she would soon have to go. So, of course, it had to come to pass. Now do you understand? The proof that she and she alone created the necessity of her going was, one, she was the last of all the heads of departments let go, for she was the most efficient. Two, she began criticising her employers and their actions. 3. She learned afterward that they did not want to lose her and they might give her back her position, having hired two young men to replace the other women let go. But she had created on the mental plane the finished thought form of being dismissed and had vitalised it with her fears and other feelings, and as a result that thought form had to out-manifest, and so it forced itself into the minds of her employers and impelled them to do what they otherwise would not have done. Now let us apply similar thought processes to the bringing forth of the good you pictured above into manifestation. You have built and now see the finished picture of that good but now, instead of seeing a negative out-manifestation of that picture, we will see a positive and happy one. So every day, and as often as possible during the day, you will see your pictured good manifesting, affecting your life in every way you can visualise it. See yourself actually enjoying it and sharing it with your dear ones and friends. And all the time you are seeing it, consciously pouring deep feelings of joy, of love and gratitude into your sense of its being an actual and living reality, your own creation, 
the product of your own spirit, which you are nursing and bringing forth into physical being. And just as surely as our friend brought forth her unwanted creation into actuality, so must your good come forth and be to you all that you visioned and intended it to be. It is the law, and a faithful following of this process in all constructive thinking and creating will always bring the results sought, even as your destructive thinking brought the results unsought. Study the above examples and explanation until the process stands out clear and true to you. Then study your own individual case until you see plainly how you came to your present state. Then begin to reverse your thought processes as shown above until you express along constructive lines only. Your sincere desire to free yourself, not just to ease yourself from suffering and hardship, but to know the truth, to learn the cause of being in any unwanted condition, and to gain the ability to free yourself from it, so you can help others to get free, will draw to you the help needed, and you will in time be free. Do not give up if your mind does not respond immediately, for it has formed the habit of wrong seeing and thinking, and you were a long time forming present conditions. Just know that if you persist until your mind sees that you are determined and really mean it, it will soon fall in line and follow the new ways of thinking you lay down for it as easily as it did the old ways in the past. The main thing is to remember always that you are dealing and working with mental substance on the mental plane, and you are not concerned with outer appearances and conditions, for you know that by such work you are shaping and changing conditions to those you wish to be manifest. We have now shown you the law, we have explained to you its operation. We have made clear that by wrong thinking and believing, you have brought upon yourself the conditions now surrounding you. And we have shown you how to free yourself from these conditions and how to create those you wish to manifest in your life. There now remain only a few more things to tell you to help impress it all upon your mind, so that it will become a part of your consciousness. The first is the importance of always being positive in your thinking, positive in your speaking, and positive in your doing, and never negative. The negative person attracts all the negative things of life, all the ills, in harmonies, troubles that are in the mental atmosphere, the effluvia of other weak and negative minds, while a positive person attracts all the good. If you understand the radio, you will know that when you set your dial at a certain wavelength, all that is on the air of that wavelength will make itself heard. It is exactly the same with your mind. It will receive whatever happens to be on the air of the wavelength to which your thoughts are attuned, so that it is up to you, and you only, what your mind radio gives forth or out manifests. Have you ever noticed how a positive person in a crowd of ordinary persons is always the centre of attraction, always makes his or her presence felt, and always accomplishes things that lesser ones never think of? A most forcible illustration was once when driving on a thoroughfare 
where there was a temporary narrow road built at the side of where a new bridge was being constructed. We came to a halt because of a long line of automobiles ahead. After waiting for some minutes, the writer got out and noticed perhaps 30 cars on the long decline to the bottom of the ravine and a similar line up the hill on the other side. But seemingly the left side of the road was clear all through. He could not see any sense in waiting, so he pulled out and started ahead and went through without opposition. While going up the other side, he looked back and found a great string of cars following him. And a man in one of these told him they had been waiting back there for 20 minutes. Evidently, two cars from opposite directions had come together with others following them, and they were afraid they could not get through on the narrow road because of other cars coming. It is always so in life. The positive soul gets there, the negative one stays behind, or tags along when he finds a leader. Why be negative? It is all an attitude of mind, and can be changed simply by changing your beliefs. Besides, we are all sons and daughters of God, children of the greatest king in the world, who naturally gives of his kingdom to all those of us who know it is our divine heritage and who will accept and enjoy them. Try to realize that you are the equal, nay, the superior of any world prince, the son of of the king of any world kingdom, for our father's kingdom includes his father's kingdom. And if we could lift our minds to the consciousness of our true selves as sons of God, we would go about knowing that all that our father, the king, has is ours, and that all of the father's servants will rush to supply, to anticipate our every need. This is actually so. Each one can experience it. All you need is to believe it and to go about in that consciousness, even as does the prince of any world kingdom in his lesser kingdom consciousness. Then as a king's son you must learn, if all that your father has is yours, to spend freely of the riches he has given you with absolute fearlessness, for there is no limit to them, no lack of wealth, for it is always available, his resources are inexhaustible. You must acquire this consciousness, you must feel even as does the other prince about spending or using money. Think you that he has any fear of lack or limitation of supply? No, there is always a great plenty for his every need, for his every comfort, every pleasure, for every constructive idea. For he knows that back of him is his father, the king, and all the resources of his kingdom. So must you learn to know that back of you is your father, God, with all the resources of his kingdom. The quickest way to rid your mind of that old fear of want, fear of your job, fear of the power of money, is to have an absolute trust in your heavenly father's loving care and for you to pay out gladly your last dollar for the needed thing, knowing that by so doing, you make it possible for him to supply you with plenty more. It is as if your needs must keep the stream of money ever flowing. If you would not clog up its source, for money, in its true sense, 
is the means for the perfect expression of material life, even as the blood is the means for the perfect expression of physical health. In both cases, your mind must not only hold true and pure thoughts, God's thoughts only, about the material life of yourself and others, and about your physical well-being, but you must know that God's mind is the source of all true thoughts. And by perfect faith and trust in him, you thus keep yourself open to the free circulation of his thoughts in your consciousness about both your affairs and your body, thus creating perfect health and harmony in both. This has been proven by many so-called tithers. They have created a consciousness where they know that by using money freely in such perfect trust in God, and especially in thanksgiving and loving gratitude to him, giving freely a percentage of their income to that part of his work which is bringing the truth to them, they become greatly blessed in this world's goods and are put in a position where they can help many souls to come into this same truth. It is the pinching and holding on to your last dollar, fearing that no more will come, that actually prevents your receiving more. Forgiving, more than anything else, helps to open the channel so that supply, both spiritual and material, can freely flow. Now we wish finally to emphasize that the application and proving of this great law not only will bring financial freedom and success, but it will bring also perfect health, harmony and happiness into all departments of your life. For when you begin to think only true thoughts about yourself, then of course God's consciousness lives in your body and his thoughts rule your mind, and there can manifest only perfect health in your body and perfect harmony in all your various affairs. When naturally happiness must sing in your heart and be your daily companion. So, dear friend, we have given you this message, one born of an intense yearning to furnish to those who are wandering in the darkness of present world conditions a sure guide to lead them back into the light of love, of abiding trust, and of true happiness. If the message, the way out, strongly impressed you, and especially if it was the means of freeing you from desperate conditions from which there seemed no way out, we earnestly urge that you do all you can to get it into the hands of those of your friends who need its saving help.